Thank you, Aurelia. So let's have a look at what's coming in V4 then. So in V4, our mission is to enable the feature development and also to improve the developer experience with our three main components. So we have the core framework that enables building new plugins and new applications. We've got the admin panel that will contain all the content management features, such as versioning, collaboration workflow, or even the publication workflow. And the third component is the plugins in general. So it's the whole ecosystem of plugins, the ones that Strapi maintains, but also the ones that you create and that contribute to building a great community. So we want to improve those three components. And to do that, we will need new foundations. So those foundations will rest on four pillars, which are the core API, the content structuring and database layer, the content API, and finally the plugin API. So we'll have a look at those four pillars right now, and we'll start with the core API. So the core API is basically our framework. We need to build a strong framework that will be stable and robust to be able to build the new features and improve the developer experience. And for that, the first thing that we're going to do is work a lot of the internal code at Strapi. So uh, we have got internal APIs, we've got internal a lot loaders, stuff like that, and we want to improve them to make Strapi more uh, robust and faster. So that's the first point. Another very important point is the error handling system. We want to make sure that the errors are handled from the DB layer and to the admin panel, and that the experience of our developers and of you uh, is going to get better, and you will know what is wrong and how to fix it. And finally, what we want to improve in the core API is to expose new stable programmatic APIs for you to use and for the maintainers to use to create new features. So for example, we are going to create a command API to add new commands to the CLI, or we are going to create a menu API to add menu items in the admin panel. So let's continue with the content structuring and database layer. So this one is the most important one, I think, for the new features that will be coming in the few next months because it's the one that will enable creating the versioning, the collaboration, and the publication workflows, which are really important to us. So the first thing that we are going to do on the DB and the content structuring layers is to rework the way we do our database schema to make sure that we can support those new upcoming features in the next months. Once that's done, we are going to have to consume that new format and that new database schema. So we are going to expose a new query engine that will be able to create the new schema and we allow you to create plugins or also to create your own application with Strapi. So it has like three really important and cool goals. It's enable the maintainers to create the new features that we want and also you to create great stuff. And the third point that we are going to work on on the DB layer is the way we migrate the schemas. So there are two important points on the migration. The first one is how do you upgrade Strapi from one version to the other? So if we need to change the core schema, we have to have the great migration system for you to just have a seamless upgrade. But there is also another goal that is migrating from one environment to another. So for example, your dev environment to your production environment. We are going to work on how we can make the migration story a lot better for you. So that's cool. Now we have new database schema, we have great features in the DB, but how are you going to use it then? Well, the first thing is we need to expose those new schemas to the content API. So in the content API, we have two parts, the REST API and the GraphQL API, and we will give some love to both of them. Um, so let's have a look at the REST API first. So the REST API, the first thing that we are going to do is standardize the response and request formats to make sure that there is something that's really flexible for us to add the new features without breaking the APIs. And it will be also a good base to create new SDKs from. We also want to add new great features that you have been requesting for a while now. So we will add paginated responses. We'll also rework the way we do the filtering so you have a better API and you can also use tools to auto-generate some code, for example. And two great features that have been really, really requesting and that are really cool, I think, are the selection of fields and the selection of relations. 
So you will be able to control what fields you really want to fetch and also avoid performance issues by avoiding to fetch all the relations when you don't need them. On the GraphQL side, we also have some stuff very important to do. So same as the rest, we are going to add the pagination and also the new filtering system. We want to make them really consistent between the rest and the GraphQL API. But we also are going to add new things. The main one is really rework the way the schema is built in GraphQL to have better standards and respect more of the best practices of the industry. So better required fields, uh, better checks on the, the inputs, and also the, the input format in itself will be reworked. And a uh, kind of cool thing is we are really going to focus on how the performance of GraphQL can be improved because it has been a pain point for a while you now, and we really want to make that better. The fourth pillar, which is not the least important, is the plugin API. So that's cool, we've got great features, we've got a new DB format, we've got content APIs that are flexible enough to create the new features, but no, it's up to you to create new great features for the rest of the community and for your own needs. And for that, we are going to rework the way the plugins can be created. The first point is we are going to introduce a programmatic API to create plugins. So you will be able to create plugins in a more flexible and more stable way. The second point is we are going to expose the core APIs I mentioned earlier, so the command API or the menu API, so the plugins can interact with those APIs and you will be able to expose like a command for your plugin. And the third part of the plugin API, which is maybe the most important part in my opinion, is the way we are doing the extensions of plugin right now. Uh, is really difficult to maintain because every time you upgrade your Strapi application, you have to also upgrade your extensions. So we will try to replace that in the upcoming features and in the upcoming releases throughout the V4 to transform the system from a simple uh, overwrite of files to a hook and observability system where you can just plug the, your code where you want and only extend the fe specific features. This will make your plugins a lot more sta stable and maintainable in the longer term. So I'm about done with all the, the pillars and there is just one very important thing I want to say. It's only the beginning of the V4, of course. We have a lot of other ideas we want to explore and we want to, to release, but the goal is really to make a first MVP release of the V4 so we can start building on top of it. It's really just a stepping stone and we will need you and your feedback to make it really better. So I will introduce Jim now to talk about the user success team.